In this video tutorial, I will explain about wave strength of the gate teeth. So, wave strength of the gate teeth means it is the amount of tangential force that the gate teeth can transmit without pitting. So, here the failure of the gate teeth due to pitting occurs when the contact stress between the two meshing teeth exceeds the surface engineering strength of the material. In order to avoid this type of failure, surface hardness should be selected in such a way that the wear strength of the gate teeth is more than the effective load between the meshing tooth. Analyson wear strength was done by Buckingham. That's why this is also called as Buckingham's equation for wear strength. Buckingham done the analysis based on the Hitch theory. So, first I will explain what is Hitch theory. According to Hitch theory, when the cylinders are pressed together as shown below. So, this is the first cylinder of diameter D1. This is the second cylinder of diameter D2. When two cylinders are pressed under the force P, that means total force acting is 2P. Then here at the point of contact, some deformation takes place. The total width of the deformation is 2B. Then the contact stress given by heads is sigma C equal to 2P by pi P L where B is the off width. So, the equation for B is as shown here. In this equation, P is the force acting on the two cylinders. B is off width of deformation in millimeters. L is the actual length of the cylinders in millimeters. E1, E2 are Young's modulus in Newton per mm square. This nu is the Poisson's ratio. After substituting this B value in this sigma c equation, it will be something like this. Here, if you take some assumptions like the cylinders are made of isotropic materials, the elastic limit of the material is not exceeded, dimensions of R1, R2 are very large compared to the width 2B, then you can take this Poisson's ratio as 0.3. If you substitute 0.3 here, this equation will become something like this. So, this is the final equation for contact stress according to heads. In this equation, P is the load acting on the cylinders, L is length of the cylinders, R1, R2 are the diameters of the cylinders, E1, E2 are the Young's modulus. If you want to apply this equation for gears, then the load acting on the gate teeth is P, that P will nothing but the resultant load acting that is Pn. Length, length of the cylinders are nothing but face width of the gate teeth that means L will become B. Young's modulus are material property of two gate teeth. R1, R2 values you have to find. R1, R2 are the radius of curvature of the gate tooth at the point of contact. These two values you have to find. For finding R1 and R2 values, I will take the geometry something like this. So, this is the pinion, this is the gear, this is the pitch point. This R1 is the radius of curvature of the gate tooth at point of contact. This R2 is the radius of curvature of the gate tooth at point of contact for gear. Alpha is the pressure angle. So, if you take the geometry like this, then the pinion, with respect to pinion, if you consider this, then this angle is alpha, then sin alpha equal to opposite side that is R1 divided by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse value is nothing but pitch circle diameter by 2. This distance is nothing but radius that is dp by 2. So, if you take the geometry, you will get the radius of curvature at the point of contact for the gate tooth with respect to pitch circle radius. So, now you can get the radius of curvature of pinion at the point of contact, radius of curvature of the gate tooth 
at the point of contact for the pinion something like this that is dp into sin alpha by 2 now coming to the gear here with respect to gear sin alpha equal to r2 into dg by 2 then r2 equal to dg sin alpha by 2 next step now our aim is to find 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 add these two then that is 2 by sin alpha into 1 by dp plus 1 by dg so this 1 by dp plus 1 by dg this term also i want to further simplify i want to make it much simple that's why i will take one parameter called ratio factor ratio factor is already known to you in your previous classes you might have studied about the ratio factor ratio factor q equal to that is denoted by q q equal to 2 into zg by zg plus zp so here zg is number of teeth on the gear zp is number of teeth on the pinion as dp equal to m into zp you can replace number of teeth with this circle diameter this is for external gear this is for internal gear so internal gears we don't consider now we will consider only for external gear for the for this derivation so now then automatically this q value if you write in terms of pitch circle diameters that will be like this 2 into dg by dg plus dp 1 by q value is something like this now i want to get 1 by dp plus 1 by dg value 1 by dp plus 1 by dg equal to dg plus dp by dp dc so here dg plus dp by dg this particular part this particular part instead of this particular part of this equation this particular part is nothing but 2 will come this side 2 by q dg plus dp by dz equal to 2 by q here dz plus dp by dz instead of this you can substitute 2 by q so substitute 2 by q then this will become 1 by dp plus 1 by dz will become 2 by q into dp so 1 by dp plus 1 by dz value that is nothing but 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 value that value is known to you that value 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 that is 2 by sin alpha into 2 by q into dp so finally 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 you are getting something like this so this you know now next p equal to pn already i have explained about this that is pn resultant force pn equal to pt by cos alpha length l equal to phase width b now you substitute pn value and l value in this equation p is nothing but pn that is pt by cos alpha l equal to b 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 value this value just now you have calculated here that you can substitute here 1 by e1 plus 1 by e2 this is anyway material property that remains constant for any component that may be cylinder or gate teeth now after substituting all those pn b and 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 value in this sigma c square equation it will be something like this if you simplifying this equation further you will get this equation my aim is to find pt that's why keep pt here send all these terms on to this side while you are sending all these terms into this side sigma c square into sin alpha into cos alpha into 1 by e1 plus 1 by e2 by 1 by 4 this entire term you call as some k this k is called as load factor so after substituting the instead of this entire term as k then pt value will become pt equal to b into this q into dp into k instead of that bigger term you are replacing that with k then finally you are getting pt as bq dp into k now what is wear strength wear strength means the maximum value of tangential force that the tooth can transmit without pitting so without pitting the value of pt is nothing but sw so instead of pt you can write sw sw equal to bq dp into k so this k value will decide whether the gate teeth can get pitting or not because this is related to surface properties surface hardness properties so here 
Now to get surface endurance strength that depends on the k value. So this k value for calculating k value one lengthy equation already you have seen here. This equation instead of that you can make it simple like this. That is done by Neiman. Neiman assumed that for 20 degree pressure angle and the gas made of steel E1 E2 value is this. Then with respect to Brunel hardness number sigma C value the Neiman derived something like this 0.27 into 9.81 into BHN Newton per mm square. So after simplifying this further by substituting this here the K value will become finally as 0.16 into BHN by 100 square. Now you know how to calculate K value. If you know the Brunel hardness number you will get the K value. Once you know the K value SW equal to BQ dp into K. So here B is the face width, Q is the ratio factor, dp is the pitch circle diameter of the pinion, K is load factor. This you are getting from the Brunel hardness number.